believed a human-like civilization existed in Antarctica, not in the frozen wastelands, but deep within the earth. They, along with Hitler, felt they could not only find this group they called Aryans, but also that they might be able to negotiate for weapons. What did he bring for negotiations? Uh, strudel. Like a Sherman? <laughs> He's like, no, German. strudel. German strudel. Yeah. That's all it took. German chocolate cake or something. Yeah. Know. That would be an interesting choice. What other bakery decisions do you think Hitler was making <laughs> in the early 90s? 19... Oh, he might have brought him some of his art. Yeah. He's Look, like, the most, I'm going to run a, the, I'm going to start the thousand year Reich. Here's my artwork. <laughs> yeah. From I painted college. this dog. Yeah. That's not, that's definitely not German. What was that? That's yeah. fine. I painted this dog, is what he said. <laughs> yeah. But in a German accent. While they mapped the continent, they also sent flights over land, finding an area of about 300 square miles miles that was not covered in ice. There was plant life and a geothermal vent that warmed the ocean beneath the ice-free area. This would be a perfect place to build Base 211. Christian, why don't you tell us about Base 211, please? All right. Base 211 would grow large enough to be almost a small city during the build-up to World War II. Originally, the base was set up as offensive. I pick on him and then I do this the same base, thing. This base is very offensive. Yeah. Originally, the base was set up as an as offensive in nature. So it's like a- Would it be offensive? Yeah, but offensive. It's like Louis C.K. Nobody's nope. laughing at that, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Louis C.K. is a national treasure, how mm. dare you? Originally the base was set up offensive, as offensive in nature. A place to launch you boats, but then Germany began to lose the war. Leadership as always, abandoning ship, began to escape the burning nation to South America, where in some towns today, there are still descendants of Germans. They speak German, and even the architecture looks straight out of pre-war Germany. This is well known from history. The story that is less known is that many of the Nazi elite were going to the South Pole, to base 211. At the end of the war, the hunt was on for Nazi fugitives, and enter Admiral Byrd. Enter Admiral Byrd. Admiral Byrd was the youngest rear admiral in the Navy at age 41. He was highly decorated then and now. A Medal of Honor recipient, along with the Navy Cross, the Flying Cross, and many more. He flew over the North Pole in the years prior to Operation High Jump, and the operation started in August 1946. Bird had 5,000 men, 13 ships, and a brand new state-of-the-art aircraft carrier with planes and all that. Two destroyers were part of the group. Icebreakers and tankers and supply ships were needed also for the group. Seems like a lot for the time, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> so like what it does seem like a lot. What, yeah. what year was this is there like a timeline when 1947 like, so this was like right after the war essentially yeah yeah i guess it makes because i was gonna say like why would they be sending so much stuff down there like in the middle of you know but that makes more sense yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 the war's over let's go but... like let's just go explore now <laughs> <Yeah>. guys <laughs> let's see what's out there you know? yeah what do we the... do now <laughs> yeah the war is over, but the Americans have been told there's a hidden Nazi base in Antarctica. And probably by some of their capture, captured Germans, we're probably talking about it. Well, I imagine that that that's probably, there's probably a, several years of like just dealing with that too, like shutting stuff down. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it, you, just because the war's won, it doesn't mean that like there aren't pockets somewhere that you have yeah. to go deal with. Antarctica is pretty remote from what I hear. So right. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, they were, I think in the 80s, they found a guy from Japan that was still out fighting the war. Really? Yeah. What's he doing? Just hiding in the bushes yeah. somewhere? He's like, <laughs> he wouldn't come out of the forest and he was still sabotaging stuff. <laughs> wow. And the only thing that stopped him is they found his old commander and right. they brought him out there and they, he met with them and he's like, no, the war is over. And he would only believe his old commander. Wow. So there was probably a lot of stuff going on after World War II. Yeah. That would make another show and it's, you know, on its own. That guy needs a podcast. I'd like to hear his story. Yeah. So it was 1993. <laughs> I slashed the tires. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, we'll have my Toyota, man. What the hell? Yeah. Okay. But that was all just a cover story and none of it would take place. America wanted to control the continent, though they were would say, so, say differently in public. They also wanted to find the Nazi base and capture its inhabitants. Another concern was the many sightings of UFOs that began to take place in South America after the Nazis, Nazis escaped to the countries there. If they had the technology that they had gone there to find prior to the war, the Germans could easily attack the United States from the base. So yes, UFOs are one of the reasons for high jump. You happy, Scott? Yeah. You love UFOs. I do. Yeah, I have shirts that say, I heart UFOs. Yeah. I thought that was a tattoo. It is. The, the U.S. wanted captured US, UFO tech. It was January 15th, 1947, when Bird and his ships arrived. They immediately started to set up a base called Little America. Which... That was the first mistake. Yeah. 
they had just landed. And like, what do we call it? Little America. Yeah. And nobody was like, don't do that. <laughs> Not weird, at that time. Weird flex. They were very patriotic, Scott. Yeah. Then what happens the next time we do it? Littler America? Come on. Tiny America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Micro America. <laughs> Little America would be their base for the next six. God. I, Christian, I think Little America might have been their base for the six to eight month expedition. You have are, you heard anything about that? You are correct. The mission would be abandoned after just 40 days. What would cause a man like Admiral Byrd to terminate such a costly mission? And this is where it gets fun. I'm glad that you wrote that in to, to remind us that this is where we'd be getting fun. Yeah. I see my name now. Yeah, I was going to put it somewhere else, but I, I thought you'd have fun talking about this part. Cool. This is kooky stuff. Scott, right oh, Scott's out. Oh, great. Yeah, thanks. Here we go. None of it's true. Oh, sorry, everyone listening that tunes in for the truth every week. No, I have to say that for, so the government leaves us alone. That is true. That is very true. That's the only thing you've ever said true on this podcast. Yeah. Never considered to be the type of thinker that goes into the realm of aliens. Richard Byrd and his task force would arrive in Chile after leaving Antarctica. You like that? No. Okay. As they arrived at port in Chile, <laughs> they're, I'm going to stop after that one. That seems like enough. The joke has run its course. There were stories going around about the strange circumstances that caused the expedition to be canceled. Bird spoke to the Spanish-speaking media. Classic thing to do in a Spanish-speaking country. <laughs> Probably, yeah. He wanted to call attention to the fact that the United States was at risk for aerial attack. He believed the focus should be on defensive measures against enemies in the Arctic and Antarctica. Bird felt in a new war, the U.S. would be attacked by flying objects that could move at high speed from Antarctica to the Arctic. He would go on to say that there was a new enemy for not only America, but these objects could attack anywhere in the world. His tone would soon change. After speaking about his concerns for about two weeks in South America, he arrived back in Washington, D.C. to be debriefed. He was interrogated. Once he was finished, he never spoke the operation or he never spoke about Operation High Jump again. The U.S. government classified the entire expedition as top secret. Sailors had died, which the Navy admitted, but they never said how many had died or how. The bodies were not returned as they had been buried on the continent. This story would end there, but there but then a diary was found and it was reported to be Admiral Byrd's. Written in 1947, it was full of details left out of the original reports that had been known to the public and most military officials. And that's Admiral Richard B. Byrd's diary. Richard B. Byrd. So this is the discovery of this diary, right? Right. Yeah. Which you probably know about. I've read it, I think. Have you? Yeah. Have so, you ever heard of any of this? No. So how did they find his diary? His, he left it to his son. Okay. And then his son later published it supposedly has anyone verified that that is actually a son is there a way to do that and not just someone that has the last name bird no i think it's the son really the question is is the diary real i feel like you could probably figure that out if you knew if you knew what his relationship with his dad was like yeah you know like if it was like something like where they had a good relationship or just somewhere his dad was kind of an asshole military dude and then he was like just to make money off this clown i'm gonna release this diary so i feel like if they had a good relationship there would be no diary because he'd be like yeah my dad's really Wow, this is some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just close that. We're just gonna put that yeah. in a box. Like, wow. Well, okay. But if he's probably, yeah. I mean, I don't know. But that's, that kind of brings into question, like, is that diary real? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like you kind of mentioned, Christian. Like, that's the whole. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he could release this, and it could just be like, well, he we knew he worked on this, and he could never talk about it, right? Because yeah. if something's classified top secret, you just you won't be able to talk about it. I mean, he wouldn't be able to talk about it for years, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and even even after, even when you can talk about it, when something gets declassified, it's still like you can't fully. You can't fully explain, like, that's what I was working on at that yeah. time. It's more like... You're just like, oh, I was aware Oh, yeah, of I was something. part of that yeah. <laughs> at some point. You know what I mean? So yeah. I existed around the same time that was being made. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. And But that's the thing. Like, this diary that we're about to get in, into has some very out there claims. And so if it is real, and if it is actually from a very highly decorated admiral, like, what, did he lose his marbles or did he well, actually see this shit? But I mean, know? like, you have to think, too, like, if you're that high up in the military, like, you are... There is stuff they know about way more than we know about. You know right. what I mean? Like, the, oh, like yeah. the level of our, like the stuff they're briefed on is like, yeah, we didn't even know that was going on. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly a chance that either he, he did know stuff that was like not for the public's consumption. And also like, maybe he went a little off the rails just because he's like, I'm, I've been briefed in all this other crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> anything goes. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, you know what else? Nephilim. No. Yeah. Sorry, it's Bring a trigger it back around, around here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. guys. No, it's yeah. it's they, fine. They know. I've been on them all yeah. the time about it. Just give me a brief 
15 minutes to explain it to you guys. It all this is like an old married couple. You can't talk about like the dryer or whatever. Yeah. We've well, heard the story the, 20 fix damn the damn times. dryer.